welcome again to this session today we are going to deal with theory of literature so before we go any further let's get the definition of literature let us get to know what literature is well literature can simply be defined as the work of art that uses language creatively to express human realities literature is only a part in the whole body of art so we have art this is where we find human realities being expressed in general so art is divided into two major categories number one is handicraft art and number two is literature handicraft art this is the kind of art that uses the hands to express its realities so hands are the ones that are being used in handicraft what is involved with handicraft these are all the kinds of art that are created by hands. For example, drawings, sewing, painting, and pottery. Whereas the other part that is literature is divided into two major parts. So when we talk about literature, we talk about spoken literature and written literature. Literature that is being spoken is the kind of literature that is expressed from the origin to the receiver through the mouth, sometimes known as in oral expression. Oral literature, all spoken literature, includes songs, storytelling. Have you ever been told a story by grandma? Yes, that was oral literature, spoken literature. But spoken literature also includes riddles. Okay, okay. Now, written literature involves all that kind of literature that is conveyed to the mass, all the audience, through written documents. Written literature has the following categories. We have poetry, we have novels, and we have plays. Now, let us see the examples of the genres of literature. When we talk about novels, the examples of novels are together with Weep Not Child, The Wreath of Father Mayor, and spared examples of plays when we talk about plays we talk about books like this time tomorrow three sweeters one husband and black hermit when we talk about poetry we refer to publications like the song of lawino and okol sermons and the famous east african poems having seen the categories of literature let us see what makes up literature whatever form of literature be it spoken or be it written it must have two major parts and these two major parts are not separated cannot be separated are inseparable okay now these two parts are form and content so form cannot be separated from content it is part of the larger body that is literature without form the content is irrelevant so each of these two depend on each other on to deliver the message to the audience so now let us examine these two in depth what is form and what is content form can simply be defined as the outer shell of the work of art this is through which the artists convey their message onto the audience. And what makes up form? Form is made up of characters with characterization, style, plot, and setting. So these four are the ones that make up form. What is setting? Setting can simply be understood as the environment where the work of art takes place or is expressed. When you read the poem, uh, song of Lawino and Okol that is uh, from the Akoli tribe in Uganda. Akoli tribe in Uganda. Uganda and Akoli tribe. This is actually the setting of this poem, Song of Lawino and Okol. When you read the book Weep Not Child, you will find out that this novel was written in Kenya. So Kenya is basically the setting of this novel, Whip Not Child, by the legend East African author Ngugi Wa Thiong. And then what is characterization? All characters. Now characters, these are the impersonated beings that take part in the work of art. So you read a story and you find that there are people mentioned there. These ones are who we call characters. And there are so many types of characters, ranging from float characters, eloping characters, round characters, emerging characters. But all these can be grouped in only two major categories. The first category, these are what we call minor characters or assisting characters. These ones 
are only there to help the major characters. The minor characters only appear for a certain reason. And these impersonated persons, they only serve a certain goal. But also, we have the major characters. Now, major characters or main characters, these ones are the ones that carry the main ideas of the novel or of the work of art. They do appear from the beginning to the end. And they do share all the major themes or all the major ideas in the work of art. For example, when you read the book uh, With Not Shelley, you find that Joroge and Waiyaki, they appear throughout the book. And these ones are what we call major characters. Again, when you read the play The Black Hermit, you find that Remy appears through all the chapters. He appears through all the scenes. He carries all the themes. By being so, we come to a conclusion that Remy was a major character. But you find that in this book, Black Hermit by Ngoki Wationg, there are characters that they appeared for a certain reason, like the pastor, all the elders. You see that they did not appear throughout the book and they did not appear through all the themes. So being there in certain environments, certain circumstances, they are what we call assisting characters because they were there to assist the major themes that were carried by the major character that was Remy and Tony. And lastly, it's style. What is style? Well, style, this is a technique. All the methods that are used by artists in conveying their messages. So there's so many different ways in which artists, these writers, can convey their messages to their audiences. They may try to use flashback style. They may try to use forward narration. So all these kinds, different kinds of techniques that what we call style in literature. So dear students, having seen form, now let us look on content. What is content in literature? Content is that that is being portrayed to the audience. All we can say that content is what the work of art is all about what is being communicated and content contains four major things number one these are conflict then we have themes messages and lastly is the philosophy of the writer or the author what are themes as far as literature is concerned themes these are the major ideas that make up the work of art the major ideas when we read the book Song of Lawino and Okol, from this book Song of Lawino and Okol, we can see that Lawino was complaining about a number of issues of a husband being in a relationship with Clementine. So from this book, we can see that love is also a theme. This is an example of a theme. It's because love was a major idea and that's why we call it a theme. Another example, when we look at the book Whip Not Child, we see that the author portrayed Njoroge as being humiliated. Njoroge was taken into detention, even though he was very innocent. So from this circumstance, we can see that now the breaking of human rights and humiliation was one of the major themes in the book Whip Not Child by Ngugi Wationg. Again, this theme of humiliation can be seen in the book this time tomorrow. We see that the government was undertaking demolitions without giving compensations to the citizens. Now this is humiliation. It's breaking human rights because humans have the right to live. And more so ever they have to live freely in their country. Uh, messages. So messages, these are what we learn from the work of art. If you read any book, if you, you hear any story, if you come across any readers, there is surely something that you always learn from it. Now that is what we call a message. In most cases, we learn lessons and get messages from the work of art where some things that were done wrong, all some things were done well. So when something is done wrong, we get a lesson. And these are what we call messages. So from any work of art that you come across and read, 
you will surely get some messages. And then now conflicts. What are conflicts? Conflicts can simply be understood as misunderstandings between people. In this case, in the work of art, you will find that at some point in time, characters come into collisions, people come into misunderstanding, people come into collisions. This one has the other idea, this one has another idea. So people are like in collision. So when this happens, we say that people are in conflict. Now, there are so many kinds of conflicts as long as literature is concerned. But these ones are the major ones. First are intrapersonal conflicts. So first are intrapersonal conflicts. These ones are the conflicts that exist within a person himself. So you find that a person has his struggles and issues about deciding what or what not to do. We say so and so is in an in intrapersonal conflict. For example, in the book The Black Hermit by Ngugi Wathiong, we find that Remy, Remy was persuaded by village elders to come back home. And they brought with them Marua medicine. It was a traditional belief that this medicine could make Remy uh, come back home. But again, the pastor persuaded Remy with the Bible, the word of God. So the pastor wanted Remy to come back by the influence of the Bible. We find that Remy was in intrapersonal conflict, whether to follow the traditional medicine, believe in it, or actually believe in God and the Bible. When you come into a situation where you are puzzled, you don't know which way to go, whether to right or whether to go left. Actually, when you come to this point, you are in an intrapersonal conflict. Another kind of conflict, these are family conflicts. You find that a family is having conflicts and issues. In the book, Whip Not Child, we see that uh, Boro was having issues with his father. Now, these ones are called the family conflicts. We also have economic conflicts. Now, these ones, they come into existence when there are collisions with the economy system. Then we have political conflicts. Now, political conflicts happen when there are issues with politics. You see, politicians sometimes agree or disagree over issues. When they do disagree, they do take different measures. You do take different measures when you disagree with people, right? Now, that happens all the time with politicians. Then we have social conflicts. Now, these ones happen in the society. Now, let us see the importance of literature. Is literature all good to us? Is there any benefit at all? Now, let us see. Actually, literature is beneficial in so many ways, and most importantly, to the learners of English language. Let us see the importances of literature. Number one, literature entertains. Have you ever been told a story and you were entertained? Have you ever heard of a song and you were entertained? Now that, my friend, was the role played by literature. But also, literature is used to criticize the society. You see, in the society we have different views. And sometimes, some people do the wrong things. Now, it is the role of these artists to criticize the society. Sometimes these artists criticize individuals in the society, like politicians, like civil servants, like business persons, but sometimes they criticize the whole society. For example, Past Like a Shadow, in this book, we see that the author criticized the society for, in fact, embracing those bad beliefs that led to the spread of HIV and AIDS, and it led to the outbreak of the epidemic. Another importance of literature is that literature derives or introduces nationalities and culture. It expresses people's culture. You see, it's from literature that we can learn of other people's culture. It's from literature that we can know about other people's nationalities. Literature plays off this role just as well. Now, last but not least, literature also has a very important role, especially to us, the learners of English language or any other language in that context. In fact, literature improves and develops language. So literature, my dear students, will foster your English language skills at immersed level. Until next time, please enjoy your time. Be safe. Be good students. I love you all. Ciao.